Hello again. So let's continue with chapter two in section two, and we're going to talk about the graph of a function. So last time we talked about functions and how to plug in numbers and what they look like and what a function means. So now let's look at it, what it looks like in a picture form. So let's learn how we identify whether a graphic is a function or not. And let's see what kind of information we can actually obtain from or about the graph of a function. So first things first, let's look at the different ways to identify whether a graph is a function or not. So the theorem, the definition, the basics is a vertical line test. So vertical line straight up and down. A set of points on the xy plane is the graph of a function if and only if every vertical line intersects the graph at most one point. So the biggest thing to take away from this, remember, you can only have one y per x. Since x is along the horizontal, if you take a vertical line and run it along x, it can only intersect whatever figure you're in one time. That's the whole thing with it. Okay, so let's take a quick look at a few different um, graphs and let's see which ones, if we can determine which ones are functions. So for A over here, okay, we have Y equals X squared. So remember, we want to know for one X, there's only one Y. So verticals up and down. So every time I do a line, we need to make sure it hits that blue only one time and that's it okay this one does so it is a function okay vertical line test for b here again if i no matter where i draw a line it is only going to touch that blue line one time now let's take a look at c and d though so if i draw this line here it's actually touching at more than one point. So that is not a function. Okay. And the same thing goes for D here, which is our circle. Any place. Now remember, it can only happen, it only has to happen one time for it to not be a function. But if I have something like this circle, this circle, every time I do a, a, a vertical line, it's touching more than once. So that is definitely not a function. So, but what other information can we actually gather by looking at some of these graphs? So the best thing that we can do to go through this so I can show you what kind of information you're going to get is to actually go through an example. So the next slide, this one has, we're going to go through with these step by step. We're going to start at A, we'll do B and C. So don't get overwhelmed okay but here is my graph so my f is the function whose graph is given in this picture do i care what the equation is no because i do want to be able to read the graph so first of all we are going to find three values at some given numbers we're going to look at the domain and the range of it we're going to look at the intercepts and how many times does it cross a law a specific line and for what values does it equal a specific thing or for what values is it greater than? So let's start off baby steps. Let's look at number A and let's isolate A here. So if we take out just A, so what are the values of F of zero? First of all, it's gonna be baby A, this is gonna be baby B, this is gonna be baby C. Okay, well that's a terrible looking C. So for baby A, F of zero, so F of X, equals f of zero, which means my point is at zero, right? Because zero is x. So if I look on my graph, okay, what's the zero here? It's this point right here, zero, four. Okay, we can read that right off the graph. Let's look for baby b f of x equals f of 3 pi over 2, and that's going to be 3 pi over 2, 
and a value. So let's look at this graph. We want to find the x where it's 3 pi over 2, which is right here. But there's my coordinate point. Okay, we're just reading it off the graph, directly off the graph. So baby C, f of x is going to be equal to f of 3 pi. Okay, so it's going to be a 3 pi and what? If I look over here on my x, 3 pi is x right there. So 3 pi minus 4. Okay, easy peasy. With this graph especially, they gave us a bunch of the points this, um, at the, the max and mins. So we were very easily able to um, read directly off the graph what those values are. So next, let's look at the domain and the range of this function. Now, if we remember, okay, the domain, x is the domain, and y is the range. Okay. Now, so my x, my x is going from here, which is x equals 0, up to here before it stops, right? And that x equals 4 pi. Okay. So my domain is equal to all x's between 0. So my domain is everywhere between x uh, or x is 0 and 4 pi. Now, let's take a closer look though at whether it's inclusive or exclusive, because inclusive is going to give us the underline or equal to. The exclusive is going to give us one without. So this actually has a point. It's a closed in point, so it's inclusive. This one also has a colored in point, and so it is, well, inclusive. So that's my domain. Okay. If I want to do it in interval notation, I'm going to say square brackets because it is inclusive, 0, 4 pi, square bracket. Okay. Now the range. So the range is going to be all y's such that. So where my y is maxing out here, right? So that's 4. And the minimum is down here. The y equals negative 4. So my y is everything in between. It never goes outside of those. So I'm going to have from negative 4 to 4. Okay. Closed dots, which means that they're inclusive. I am equal to it. So I need to make sure that it's less than or equal to. Okay. On interval notation, because it is equal to, it's square. Minus 4, comma, 4. Square again, equal to. Okay, so we're getting a lot of great information out of this one graph. So, next thing we want to do, let's look at the intercepts. Let's take a look at the intercepts. So, we're going to remember that an intercept is where it crosses or touches any of the coordinate axes. So for this one, we have this point, we have this point, this point, this point, and that point. So all we have to really do is write out those points. Pi over 2, 0. 3 pi over 2, 0. 5 pi over 2, 0. And 7 pi over 2, 0. Okay, we've got your x-intercepts are where your y equals 0. And we have your y-intercept where x equals 0. OK? So we can also find that off of the graph itself. So we only have a couple more things that we want to look at. And so let's, how many times does the line y equals 2 intersect 
this graph. So y equals 2 is going to be a horizontal line, right, through the graph. Now, I'm going to attempt to make a straight line. Good luck to me. Yeah, okay, it's not terribly straight, but we get the idea. Okay, so how many times does it cross? One, two, three, four. So it crosses the graph four times. Okay, so all I really did was I drew a second graph on to my coordinate system and I counted how many times I crossed. No big deal. Last but not least, let's look at some different equations. So for what value of x does f of x equal minus 4? So what we're saying is y equals minus 4. So we want to know where y equals minus 4. If I draw the line y equals minus 4, well, that, see, that's not even a straight line either because it's supposed to be, go through this little point. Let's see if I can do that again. We're just going to make it a really thick line. It covers up all the boo-boos. Okay, so if I draw the lawn y equals minus 4, I can see that it crosses here and it crosses there. Okay, so for what values of x, so where x equals pi and x equals 3 pi, because what it's asking for is the value of x where y equals minus 4. Okay. Now, the last question that we have to look at for today is what value of x is f of x greater than 0? So where is y greater than 0? The so y is equal to 0 here, okay? But we want greater than 0. So it's going to be everything above that. Okay, so we've got a few different pieces. It's going to be this piece and that piece and that piece. So we've got three different pieces that is making it greater than zero. Now remember, this is not a greater than or equal to, so we're going to have some round brackets. So let's take this first, and let's do this in interval notation. So this first piece here, x is in the... From 0 to pi over 2, and it's the non-inclusive bracket because we're not equal to, okay? Now, I'm going to do that union notation because I'm going to do three separate pieces. Again, it's equal to, so we don't want to put those, so we're going to use the rounded brackets instead of the square brackets, and it's going to be 3 pi over 2, which is here, to 5 pi over 2. And again, rounded union. Okay. Last but not least, we've got this last little portion here, which goes from 7, 7 pi over 2 to 4 pi. Now, at 4 pi, it, we are equal to. So let's go ahead and put the square bracket. Okay. Now, if I was going to do the inequality notation, it would be, let's see, 0 equal to, because we are up there, right? Um, x, pi over 2, union, 3 pi over 2, x, 5 pi over 2, union, 7 pi over 2, x, equal to 4 pi. Okay, so we were able to get a whole lot of information out of just reading the one graph. Okay, again, take it in baby steps, go chunk by chunk, and don't freak out on me. So, as always, if you have any questions, ask one of your professors, and I'll see you next time.